G'day folks, it's Rob here. In today's video we're going to be running through a couple of issues that people commonly have with running their bell siphons in their aquaponics media grow beds. And I've also made up a little bit of a demonstration rig uh, just to showcase the issues once we get to them. Before we get cracking though, I just wanted to remind you folks that I have a guide coming very soon. It's an introduction to DIY backyard aquaponics. It's a really awesome little bit of kit these folks have been working on. Uh, all you need to do is tap the microphone button, speak into the phone, and then the guide will take you to the information that you're inquiring about. Just a quick heads up folks, I took so long to edit this video that the guide is actually out now. So check out the link down in the description after you finish the video of course. A bell siphon setup it consists of mainly four parts. We'll start from the outside and work our way in. We have a media guard that basically stops all the media from getting sucked up through the bell and clogging up the whole system. Inside the media guard we have a bell. Now the bell is what actually creates the siphoning effect that drains the water from the grow bed and sends it down into the sump tank or fish tank below. Underneath the bell we have the standpipe and that's the delivery system that moves the water from the bed to the vessel below and below the bed itself we have a drain pipe that just directs the water to where we want it to go. If you folks wanting to know how to build a bell siphon you can click on that little link up there or down in the description wherever you see this and that will take you to a video that shows you how I make the bell siphons. Uh, my design virtually hasn't changed except for the bells that I use so yeah check that out. So how a bell siphon actually works is pretty simple the water moves through the slits in the media guard into the bell chamber. From there it enters under the base of the bell, fills up slowly inside the bell. When there is enough water flowing down the standpipe to initiate a water lock within the drain, a siphon is initiated and the water is drained out of the grow bed. Now when the water level reaches the base of the bell, air enters into the bell and as the water velocity slows in the drain, air will also flow up through the drain pipe. Both of those lots of air will break the siphon within the bell and that finishes that cycle and the bed is allowed to fill again just to repeat over and over and over. So now we'll move on to some of the issues people have with trying to tune or get their bell siphons to run correctly. And then after we're done there, I'll run through a um, couple of common questions I get uh, asked by people online. So to begin with, there are two main issues that people have with their bell siphons. One is the siphon itself will not initiate. And the second one is the siphon will not stop as soon as the bell has initiated, basically running constantly all the time. The first one we're going to start with is the siphon isn't initiating. Now it's a fairly common one actually and generally only occurs when you're first setting up your grow bed. All you need to do is adjust the water flow into the bed. That's a very easy thing to do if you're running a split flow system like ours. You nip around to the valve, slowly increase the flow, then run around to the bell assembly and then just keep an eye on when the siphon is initiated. Uh, it can be a little bit fiddly and time consuming, but generally speaking, once you've got it dialed in, you, you should have no issues whatsoever. Just a little tip, don't wait until the bed fully drains before you know that it's working and initiating properly. Break that siphon after 15, 20 seconds, and then just let it initiate a couple of times, just so you know that it's pretty much all going to um, start flowing as soon as that water level gets up towards the top of the bell. Just a quick heads up for you folks who run a straight drain under your bell siphon and you can't get it to initiate or drain the bed properly. I dare say what's happening is the air is allowed to travel straight back up that straight drain pipe and you're not getting a water lock initiate or if it does it only partially drains the bed. The easiest fix for this is quite simple. Just attach a 90 degree elbow on the bottom of that drain pipe and then into that you can push a section of pipe and that will go a long way to restricting the air flowing back up the pipe, creating a water lock, and your bell siphon should initiate no problems after that. And if you do need to tune it, hopefully the other pointers in this video will help you out. One thing I would recommend to anyone who is having um, issues with their bell siphon not initiating, if they've got a straight standpipe, is to follow Afnan's suggestion and put a reducer on here. So this is a 20 mil pipe to a 25 mil reducer. Uh, what happens is you've got a greater circumference, more water can fall over, create a water lock within the standpipe and the drain system to help initiate the siphon. Uh, by the way, thank you very much Afnan. There is a link to Afnan's website down in the description wherever you see this video. So I definitely recommend you putting one of these on if you've only just got a straight standpipe at the moment. It could end up saving you a lot of time trying to um, tune up the bell siphon. 
Now another reason why a siphon may not initiate may not have anything to do with the water flow. It may have to do with your bell itself. Uh, the cap may not be airtight. So if it's not airtight, generally what happens is you may get a small slow siphon start but then it will break very quickly because as the uh, siphon initiates it creates a little bit of a vacuum air wise within the bell itself and that will eventually suck enough air through the loose cap to break the siphon so that's something else to look at if you think your water flow is hunky-dory going into the grow bed now the next issue is something that i have seen happen a little bit more frequently and that is the siphon will not break basically the siphon initiates just fine the bed drains, but the siphon will not break and you continually have water leaving through the drain into the tank below. Now, there can be a few different reasons why this can be the case. Uh, the number one, uh, very similar to the first issue of the siphon not initiating, is basically too much water entering into the grow bed and it will not stop because the flow in is pretty much all equal to the flow out through the drain pipe. This one can be a little bit more time consuming to fix though, because every time you break the siphon you, and you turn your water down in the grow bed, you have to wait for it to fill again before you can um, watch the siphon initiate and then see if the uh, siphon will break. Now, hopefully um, a couple of these next issues, you can work through them first to make sure it's not them. And then you can worry about running backwards and forwards and um, having to regulate the flow and bed spilling and draining. Uh, the next issue that I have seen is the drain pipe underneath the grow bed is actually on a bit of an upward angle. So what happens there is not enough air can come back down through the drain pipe to aid in breaking of the siphon itself. You could possibly get away with turning down the water flow into the bed, but I think it's a lot easier just to have the drain under the bed on a downward slope towards the tank below. Another issue that's similar is sometimes the drain pipe can be a little bit too narrow and a little bit too long, and the air cannot make it back through that drain pipe to help break the siphon. So I've got one bed that's over two meters away from the sump tank and to make the breaking of the siphon a lot easier what i've done is i have the drain coming down into a large diameter pipe so we have a one inch drain fitting going into the top of a 90 mil pipe which is just over three inches and then that runs all the way down into the sump tank itself where it discharges i have run long stretches of thin pipe towards the sump tank before and i found just incorporating a small snorkel along the way can help break the siphon I have been told by others that that method didn't work for them, but I thought I'd just mention it anyway. As I mentioned before, the siphon not breaking can be the hardest one to rectify, but if you keep in mind that that drain pipe needs to be pointed down, uh, not too long, and yeah, you're pretty much all just left with regulating the flow into the bed. And from my experience, once you get it dialed in and it's running all right for 24 hours, you should have no issues with it whatsoever. Now, if you followed all my little pointers and you still can't get the bell to break, there is one option that works a treat. It's basically create a bit of a snorkel on the bell siphon itself. So air can be drawn up through the base of a pipe running down the side, to the top of the bell and then that will break the siphon and away you go. I've got one um, in the system at the moment and it seems to be doing fine. I don't really need it because it's dialed in right but if I wanted to make the bed a high flow bed whether to get more biofiltration from the water coming from the fish tank or just to use up some extra flow from the pump itself I could quite easily just turn up the water flow and I'd have no problems with the siphon initiating and breaking at all. Uh, just something else to keep in mind. Um, in fact if you want to go and check out someone who's um, perfected this down to a T. Check out Rob from Bigelow Brook Farm. I'll put a link to his video on the bell siphon up the top there and there'll also be a link in the description so yeah go check out Rob's content and see what he's all about. Fantastic aquaponicist. Just a bit of a tip or a pointer for you folks out there who do find that you may need to work on the bell siphon in an existing grow bed. Uh, you don't have to pull all the media out. Make yourself up one of these. It's basically a uh, flower pot with the hole cut out of it. Now I've found with trial and error that it's best not to try and push the thin edge down even though it's easier to get it through the media. What will happen is the media will push on it and basically make it a little bit harder to work with. If you can try and work down this reinforced uh, top edge you might have to get in there with a um, small hand trowel if you've got rocks in your bed just to dig around a space so you can get this down as far as you can and then just scoop out the media either as you go or um, once it's down in place if you're working with clay. So 
So just a little bit of a pointer there. So I was asked by a mate on Facebook, Cam Hunter, g'day mate, about um, how to try and silence the water flowing into the sump tank because your neighbours may not appreciate it. Owls love it, they think it sounds like a fountain, so we're all good there. I came up with this idea when we first started. It's basically well, a series of holes drilled in a larger pipe, holes in the end. This just basically sits in the tank that receives the water from the grow bed. The water hits the side of the pipe, doesn't make a lot of noise, flows down and then it just leaves through the holes on the side or in the base and we found that that did knock down a lot of the sound at the time we basically took it out once the neighbors said they actually liked the sound of the water so just to answer a question I get a fair bit on my bell siphon video in regards to bells I got a few other things to talk about with the bells um, I did mention I was using a 65 millimeter um, drain pipe you can use just the normal 50 millimeter or two inch pipe to create the bell for your bell siphon, no drama at all. Um, this is just what was recommended to me when I first started. I've since found that the 50 mil works absolutely fantastic. Uh, so that's what I pretty much will run with. In fact, I'm telling a little bit of a fib now because I've actually changed over to drink bottles. So this is one I saved from the recycle bin. It's just got a couple of notches down the bottom and it's actually been running in the bed behind me here for quite some time. Um, I find it works well, not a problem whatsoever. If you are having flow rate issues, you can hook up a snorkel, uh, really easy. I've been running it in the test rig for a couple of days now on and off, and it works absolutely brilliantly. Uh, breaks that uh, flow very, very easily. Uh, so yeah, um, it's one of those things, just think outside the box and you might come up with something. Just wanted to touch on this briefly as well while I've got this here. A lot of people have queried me about the head space between the top of the standpipe and the top of the bell. Now this one here sits roughly around about there, so we have a fairly decent head space. But on the bed behind me here, I'm actually running a lot shorter bell at the moment out of another drink bottle. And the top of the standpipe is probably millimetres away from the top of the bell. And it's been firing on and off, no dramas whatsoever uh, since I've been playing with this test rig about a week now. The head space I have found really doesn't matter, as long as that is obviously, it's not touching on the top of the, um, the bell itself. Uh, where it would restrict the flow. As long as there's a little bit of a gap there, I'd say, you know, about a centimeter or um, just under half an inch, you should be right and you should be able to initiate those siphons, no problem at all. Just quickly with the bells, I have had some people tell me that others have told them um, that these legs don't work too well. I've had no problems with them whatsoever. I've been running with them pretty much well for the last two systems, not the first one. I started off originally with just holes in the bottom of the bell siphon. And that seems to work fine. Uh, these legs are just a little bit easier to cut out when you lost your um, hole saw. I have had someone else tell me that this was what was recommended to them, scientifically tested or something, and it works better than any others. Seriously, I've run one like this myself as well. And yeah, all three work pretty much all the same. So I do hope that's helped you folks out who are having problems with your siphons initiating or not initiating. And also too, answered a couple of questions about you know how to make up these little bells and different materials you can use. So there you go. Uh, before I go, just a quick reminder that guide is coming out in the next week or so. So hit that little subscribe button down there and jump onto the bell icon if you want a notification because I will be letting you folks here on YouTube know first before anyone else. Uh, special thanks as always. It needs to go out to those folks supporting us on the YouTube membership program and also our Farm Your Own Yard supporter site. Really do appreciate the support folks. But I will pretty much all leave it there. I do hope that your aquaponics and your gardens are booming and I will catch you next time. Happy growing folks.